You're listening to Play Callers. New episodes dropping every Tuesday at 3.30 p.m. Central Time. Available to stream across all platforms. Also, be sure to check out the Tiger's Den Podcast. New episodes dropping every Monday at 3.30 p.m. Central Time. Available to stream across all platforms. Ladies and gentlemen, as the intro just said, y'all are listening to Play Callers which is now actually the official number one high school podcast in the state of Alabama, according to the ASPA awards that this podcast competed in and won this past Friday. But you know who else is looking to be number one when it's all said and done? He is the former Auburn University Center who famously went toe-to-toe against Shaq. He's also the current head coach of the Auburn High Tigers men's basketball team who, when this episode is released, will be facing against the Central Red Devils tonight at 6.30 p.m. with the, with the title of area champion on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, the first ever repeat guest on this show, it's Coach Chris Brandt. Coach, how are you doing today after that playoff ceiling victory against the right. station last night? I'm doing pretty well. I'm a little tired, a little exhausted. Um, when you get down to the end of the year and all these games get really meaningful, it, it takes a lot out of you, especially I've been doing this for a long time. So, But everything's good and um, getting ready for the next challenge. Yes, sir. I mean, you know, when we're recording this, uh, fans – it's uh, the championship is two days out. We're recording this on Sunday night, and you're actually just getting back from a practice with the team. Uh, how did that go? You know, getting prepared for this rematch against the Red Devils. What are some things that y'all are, you know, adjusting from last night's game as well as the last time y'all played the Red Devils in order to try and get that victory on Tuesday? Well, one thing we're, we're really trying to um, hone in on is our, our defense end of the basketball against Central. They're such an amazing team on their fast break. Uh, I believe they might have had 14 to 15 dunks against Opelika um, in that area game, and it's just going to be a really challenge for us to not let them run their break and to try to block them out as much as we can because they're such an athletic team. So those are the two main challenges that we're really uh, working on um, these next two days. Yes, sir. Well, once again, congratulations on the win yesterday, uh, taking down a Smith Station team who, like you said during the halftime interview during the Central and Opelika game, I mean, they had nothing to lose. And that game was actually really close entering the fourth quarter. Uh, Y'all were only up by six against the Panthers, although y'all were able to end up pulling away 67 to 38 to get the playoff ceiling win. But I wanted to ask you, what would you pin the first three quarters to? Because we interviewed Jordan Franklin after the game, which more about him in a second. But uh, he even said y'all were playing a bit sloppy up until the fourth quarter. Would you pin those struggles on possibly overlooking the Panthers after y'all beat them by 43 the last time y'all faced them? Or what else would you pin those struggles on? And how do y'all plan to fix those struggles in the area championship? I think it was more that Smith had a great game plan against us. They uh, changed their style of basketball play. They were being very patient, um, making 10 to 12 passes before they uh, were looking to score, and that kind of disrupt our our flow and, and what we usually do. And we're the ones who usually control and dictate the tempo, and I think by what they were doing, it just kind of got us out of sync. And so what we ended up, in the fourth quarter doing is changing our defense it up, defense uh, um, responsibilities up. And then I think that opened it up a little bit better and we were able to get out on the break and, and make some key baskets. And then I kind of put them under pressure to score right away. So it got more to our tempo. Yes, sir. I mean, I was on the call last night with um, for the live broadcast on AHS Mass Media with uh, Reese. And um, he was talking about, because whenever I would ask him, you know, it seemed like every time y'all would start to pull away, Smith Station was able to answer. And one of the things he brought up, like you just did, was um, that they were playing, the game was being played at their pace. But going into the fourth quarter, y'all obviously were were able to change that and shift it to where y'all were playing on y'all's pace. And that that ended up being the difference in the game. Uh, but despite the struggles, like I just said, y'all locked in in the fourth quarter, outscoring the Panthers 28-5 to in the final period to clinch a spot in not only the area championship, but also the 7-8 playoffs. 
What exactly did you tell your team at the end of the third quarter that spurred them to a game ceiling fourth quarter? Well, I just was um, stressing that we needed to run a play. Uh, we went for about six minutes, um, basically trying to do it where we were making one pass and trying to shoot it. And I was like, let's change it up. Let's actually run the play out the whole play through its um, series that we have. There's a lot of different looks in every option. And um, let's uh, turn the shoe on the other foot and, and kind of make them work on defense. And I think that's uh, – one good reason why we were able to score so easy. Yes, sir. I mean, y'all basically opened up the fourth quarter with a 15 nothing run, or it was something like that. And, yeah, auto automatically uh, the game was completely in y'all's hands. Um, but another thing that in that interview with uh, Jordan uh, post game to the game last night was he brought up, uh, talking about the Central game now, is that Central actually beat y'all last year in the area championship game. Uh, in a game that was similar to this year, y'all hosted. Uh, does that loss last year give your team any extra motivation going into this game to seek revenge? Well, you know, we do remember what happened last year, and, and we had it in our hands and in our grasp when we let it slip away. But, you know, Central is such a dynamic team, and there's a reason why they were in the, the state finals last year. We know each other so well, so it's kind of hard to, to – um, put a sneak attack on them because they're, they're pretty much aware of everything that we can do. And we kind of on the same boat from the other end that we know a lot of stuff that they can do. So it's more us trying to run our system while they're tr and try to prevent them from doing their system. And they're doing the same thing to us. So, you know, we try to not put pressure on this game. Yes, we want to be area champions. But the more important thing is we took care of Saturday night. No matter what happens on Tuesday, we move on to next week. Yes, sir. I mean, uh, you just stole the words right out of my mouth. I was about to discuss that. Yeah, y'all clinched a spot in the playoffs already. So no matter what, uh, y'all will be playing in Birmingham for the 7A playoffs. But last year, also – Another thing that uh, Jordan brought up in that post-game interview uh, with our boy Jake Vistozo uh, with AHS Game Day is that y'all also lost in the first round of the playoffs last year after losing to Central. So a quick two-part question here um, before I get to my last couple of questions. How important is it uh, getting the area winner seed as compared to the runner-up? Because uh, the way seeding works is uh, area championship does kind of have an impact on that. How big is that? And also... What makes you think that this year's team can make it past the first round and possibly all the way to state? Well, it, it's definitely an advantage to win because most most likely Fairhope and it's been the best team down in their area and pretty much down in Mobile um, for the past two to three years. And it'd be like it's a, if we lose, we're going to end up playing them first and like we did last year. Uh, we actually had a chance to beat them last year, but we let them take the lead on us with two and a half minutes, and they made their free throws. So by winning, we're trying to avoid meeting two monsters, and that's Fair Hope and Central, and, and maybe trying to get them to play each other. And so that way, you know, it's still going to be a difficult task in region, but it, it becomes a little bit easier road if we can uh, – Win the, win the area and then be the first, number one seed in our region tournament. Yes, sir. I mean, and now I want to quickly, I've kind of foreshadowed it, but I want to quickly speak on uh, Jordan Franklin, who last night, I mean, one of the big reasons, he had a great game, but one of the big reasons we snagged an interview from him last night was because he actually broke the Auburn High School single season record for assists with 160. And when we asked Jordan about what breaking the record meant to him, the first thing that came out of his mouth was that he owes it to his teammates for making the shots, which reveals a lot about the type of player Jordan is. What do you think has led him to this success in this record-breaking season? And how special is it to coach a player uh, through his, basically his entire high school career uh, and ultimately seeing him break a record in his senior season? Well, it, it was a situation in the middle of the year. John was averaging like three to four assists a game, and he had an unbelievable game against Prattville where he – actually broke a, a single game, which is having 16 assists in Auburn High history. So then we sat down, we were talking about 
how much we're better off if he can get a lot of assists. Our, our team movement's a lot better. You get more people involved. And then I happen to show him all the records um, that I have online on the athletic page. And I was like, look, that's it. It is a possibility, but you really got to work on it. And by doing that, he really uh, embraced it. But more importantly, it helped us get more people involved. And, and anytime you get a point guard that is honed in on trying to get assists, but hitting the people when they're open, it makes us such a, a harder team to play against. Yeah, I mean, Jordan is one of those guys that um, he seems to be really entering this mode of where he's the true point guard, you know, looking to get his other team teammates into spaces where they're able to shoot uh, shots uncontested and able to run up the score. But um, he's also, you know, just such a selfless player. And we notice, you know, commentating the games that we have. Uh, Jordan's known for doing those no-look passes that look super, super cool. But it's just his vision, you know, on the court that really helps him be a great player. So glad to see him break the record last night. Awesome to witness it. Uh, but going into this game once again, uh, this area championship game on Tuesday night, uh, who are some players that you think uh, for y'all will need to come up big in order for y'all to get this win against Central? Well, I mean, anybody can step up for us, and that's been our, our key to our success this year is that we've always had somebody different step up in key games and actually lead us in scoring. If you look back at our, I guess, 10, 12 games, we've always had somebody different. So, But we just need to be consistent from the outside, but also in the inside game. It's uh, one of those things that we can't have happen where we go five for 30 or five for 25 from three and then shoot a slow percentage inside. That's going to make it really difficult. And a lot of times when, with the games that we lost, that's what we did. So it's more that we are all on pace and shooting well. So, or at least several people, not the whole team. So, that's the most important part of the game on Tuesday and for our success of when we go on to regionals. Yes, sir. Now I quickly want to dive a little bit into, um, you know, Central's game against Opelika, which you're actually sitting next to me uh, watching, you know, them play against Opelika, a game that was really Opelika was in striking distance the whole game, but Central ultimately took over in the fourth quarter. One of the main strengths I noticed for the Red Devils uh, yesterday against Opelika was their size and athleticism against them, including uh, Jonah Jones, who led their team in scoring uh, with 24 and eight dunks. Um, how do you plan on preparing for that aspect of their game specifically in this area championship? Oh, well, once again, yeah, that, that's pretty impressive. I think they might have had like 14 dunks overall <laughs> in the whole game, but it, it is their, their strength. And what they do, they've been very successful, is if on made or missed baskets, they try to beat you down the court and get numbers. Uh, they're very good at shooting the open shot, the threes, but they're really impressive how they attack the goal. So it's one of those things that we have to get back. We have to have more people down than they do, or at least the same amount. And uh, they're looking to get three-on-two, four-on-two situations. So it's, uh, for us to be successful, we really have to key in and hone in on getting back on defense. Yes, sir. And uh, one of my last questions, uh, the last time y'all played Central at home was on January 5th of this year. And it was a game where y'all came back from a double-digit deficit early on in the third third quarter. I was actually on the sideline for that game as well doing uh, PA. But y'all uh, came back to win in a double overtime thriller, 83-80. to 80. Uh, So I ask you, I know you would prefer it to not be that close this time around, but what can fans expect in this game that will be taking place when this episode is released? It'll be taking place tonight at 6.30 p.m. on y'all's home court. Uh, can the fans expect some of the same fireworks that we saw in that game on January 5th? I would think so. Um, Central is the type of team that you can never get too far ahead and you can never get too far behind. They go with runs, and we also do too when we play them. If you watch or if you look back at all the series the last three years, every game somebody's gotten up 8 to 10 to 12 points and we're, the other team would come back. But the thing about it is, is I just – 
as a team, for us, we can't allow them to get up 20 points. That becomes a tall task to try to make up that much ground. But we feel like if they do get up 10 or 12, if we would just stay patient of what uh, we want to do, that we can somehow manage to get it uh, back in the striking distance. And that's what we're trying to do is to be close or leading close at the end of that game and try to put pressure on them. Yes, sir. I mean, you know, I remember uh, last time we interviewed you on this podcast, uh, you were talking about one of the questions I think Reese asked you was um, in that third quarter when y'all went down by double digits, you didn't actually take a timeout and you let the team play through it and Mm -hmm. able to get back in that game. I mean, that shows the trust you have on this team and in these players, but uh, it's been a pleasure speaking with you once again, Coach Brandt. I know myself, as well as the fans, cannot wait to see what the team does tonight against the Red Devils. And with that, I'll ask you one last question. Uh, are there any last words you would like to say to the fans before they witness your team go to war tonight on the court when this episode's released? We just need everybody out there. We need to be loud. Um, we need to make it a hard atmosphere against Central on Tuesday. But also, when we go to Birmingham and play at Bill Harris Arena next, uh, I think it's Wednesday, February 14th. So no matter what happens on Tuesday, we also need a big support. The team really thrives on hearing the fans out there, and, and they play super They're excited, but they play super hard. So just everybody come out and support us. And before I close out the interview with Coach Barant, I would like to introduce one of my favorite personal segments on this show, Sounds of the Game, where we interview some of the coaches and players during the games throughout the week. And this time we got some interviews by our friends at AHS Game Day, Caroline Witten, as well as Isaac Shoemaker. Uh, Isaac's actually first time doing sideline interviews. He got some interviews uh, during the Low Chipoka game as well as Caroline Witten did. So with that, I hope you all enjoy. I noticed y'all have a very supportive group of women out there. Um, so you shape the team very beautifully. So how are you feeling going with like with another win towards the end of the season? Well, just trying to get them out of the way and get ready for postseason play. Um, you know, I think it's good to just get that last game of the season out of the way without anybody getting injured and get yourself in the postseason play. And so I'm excited that we were able to get a win and get in the postseason. How are you feeling about you know your 2024 group leaving? Uh, I mean, I miss that group. It's a good group. I mean, we got a really great player in there with Soraya, so um, it's going to be kind of tough to have her going, but um, we'll we'll bounce back and prepare and and get the other group ready and uh, and have another piece of legacy going on in our house. Hello, my name is Isaac Shoemaker, and I'm here with Coach Brandt. Coach Brandt, how are you feeling about this game? Well, it's a special night because we want to send out these seniors with, uh, you know, hopefully a great victory, but we... uh, we got our eyes focused to try to play a complete game and, and make this like a playoff type of game because we're going to be playing here the next couple of days. Yeah, just like you said, about the next couple of days, how are you feeling about this area tournament coming up soon? Well, I'm excited that we're able to host it this year. So, you know, we need a big crowd. It's going to be do or die for these teams on Saturday and Friday for the girls. So we need a lot of support. Yes, sir, of course. And one last thing about your senior class. How are you feeling about sending them off? Well, it's, uh, I'm happy for them, but I'm also sad. Uh, we've been through a lot these last several years, and so I just, I just want the, the world for them. And uh, you know, we're going to be—they're going to have a great future ahead of them. And so we're just going to finish this year out. Yes, sir. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Uh, my name is Isaac Shoemaker, and I'm here with Coach Jackson. Coach Jackson, how are you feeling about the game tonight? It's going to be. It's going to be a dog fight. Uh, Los 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 is a great team. We just hoping we come out and do what we need to do to get in playoff basketball mode. Speaking of playoffs, how are we feeling about the area tournament hosted here this weekend? Well, everybody's undefeated right now. So we got to go 6-0. If we go 6-0, we stay champs. That's good. And uh, senior class, how are we feeling about them? They are very loved. This, This class been through so much. And what a way to go out as area then region champ, then state champ. That's our goal. Yes, sir. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Hi, my name is Isaac Shoemaker, and I'm here with a halftime inter- interview with Coach Jackson. Coach Jackson, how are we feeling about this game at halftime? Well, we feel pretty good that we got everybody in, and everybody's having fun and playing basketball. That's really all that matters here, and senior night especially, and having all the seniors play. 
and uh, score a bunch of points. Yeah, especially Miles Bernstein. He, he is going hot today. He yeah. might be our player of the game. Yeah, please. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Yes, sir. Well, fans, y'all, y'all heard Coach Brent. Be there. Be loud. Uh, but, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for Episode 17 of Play Callers. Once again, Coach Brandt, ladies and gentlemen, always a pleasure speaking with you. And I hope you have a good night. And for the fans, be sure to stream uh, our other podcast, The Tiger's Den, as well as some of the past episodes of this show, including our interview with Coach Halverson, which I would like to highlight because that is the podcast that ultimately won the award for Best Podcast. And with that, from myself as well as Coach Brandt, see you next time and go Tigers. Thanks for listening to this week's edition of Play Callers. Be sure to check out our episodes dropping every Tuesday at 3.30 p.m. Central. Also be sure to check out our other podcast, The Tiger's Den, where we dive into the world of sports. Be sure to check out those episodes coming out every Monday at 3.30 p.m. Central. Thanks for listening.